Ferrari is trying to catch up in this second part of the 2024 championship. Formula One is a serious business, and once again, unfortunately, the Marinello team has demonstrated this with the issue of aerodynamic updates, a topic that remains very difficult for the prancing horse, despite the countless negative experiences accumulated over the years. Learning from their mistakes is not easy for Ferrari, evidently. Before providing some information about the near future, let's talk once more about a key factor, a little discussed element from which many things can be understood, the inverted side pods. We are talking about a solution that didn't work as well as it should have. This is clear. Ferrari had a clear advantage this winter, knowing in advance about Red Bull's setup which was leaked by some new technicians acquired from the Austrian team. The Italian team made a significant effort to bring these inlets for the Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix at the Imola circuit. The benefits were supposed to be multiple and tangible, especially regarding potential development for the rest of the season. The main benefit, on paper, concerns the larger area in the undercut. By flipping the inlet lip indeed, several cubic millimeters can be recovered in the undercut area. This move is supposed to generate greater static pressure in that part of the car, and as a result, increase outwash, a crucial effect for pushing the turbulences created by the front tires rolling outward. Now the question is, why didn't this innovation deliver the expected results? Without computational fluid dynamics comparison, it's hard to say. In simulations, the so-called shark inlets showed advantages that didn't materialize later on. The evidence highlights this factor. However, according to information gathered on the field by various Italian news media outlets, we know that, from an aerodynamic standpoint, Ferrari encountered a discrepancy between the simulated pressure field and the real one. But how can such a scenario be explained? The question is simple but encompasses several complexities. There are indeed several obstacles. The first concerns the difficulty in reproducing driving conditions in the wind tunnel. The car undergoes various rotations relative to the main axes, such as pitch, yaw, and roll. Other variables involve the change in ground clearance between the front and rear and the so-called flow curvature. Although these variations are minimal, for Ferrari, they have shown a significant effect on the vehicle's aerodynamics, as they were not reproduced as faithfully as possible. Wind tunnel hours are regulated by the International Federation. For this reason, they are limited. Testing all the variables concerning the SF24 car's setup, therefore, proved to be much more challenging than anticipated. There are also additional obstacles that increase the discrepancies between simulation environments and real-world conditions. For the wind tunnel, which is used as the final cross-check before hitting the track, the model tested is scaled. We know that there are some discrepancies in the Reynolds number and in the imposed constraints. However, for Ferrari, other aspects have further heightened the aforementioned inconsistency. These are factors related to geometry that cannot be faithfully reproduced. Tire deformation, internal fluid blockage in the side pods, and the deformation of elements themselves under certain loads. Computational fluid dynamics is far more reliable in this regard when it comes to dimensions. On the other hand, in this case, geometric limitations are easily overcome. Nevertheless, there are other types of problems with this kind of software that concern the methods applied to solve the numerical problem. Each system, whether wind tunnel or computational fluid dynamics, possesses a higher level of accuracy in a specific area of the car. Therefore, the technicians must demonstrate a certain skill in combining the use of both tools to achieve a good final result. We must indeed remember that the functionality of these important resources is jeopardized by this long process full of technical pitfalls. In Ferrari's case, however, we can say that discrepancies have accumulated in this context. Even though they managed to make the solution work fairly harmoniously with the rest of the car body, the aerodynamic data are not as expected. Neither Red Bull nor the historic Italian team are currently the cars to beat, despite this solution potentially representing a real turning point. This approach, within the current regulatory framework, was supposed to offer significant advantages that are currently absent. Former Ferrari technical director and head of aerodynamics department Enrico Cardile led the Shark Inlet project, but his departure from the Marinello team doesn't seem to be linked to this aspect, having been contracted by Aston Martin for a very important role. Regarding Ferrari, the future of the Italian side remains uncertain. We recently discussed the various solutions under consideration to correct the SF24. The goal is to make sense of the 2024 Formula One Championship 
because the season is still long and laying the right foundations for the next campaign is crucial. Additionally, one last piece of information related to the present. The Dutch Grand Prix is coming up and the round scheduled to take place at the 4.259 km circuit Zandvoort is always a very challenging scenario for the Marinello team. Ferrari has studied a lot in recent weeks and is convinced, as team principal Frederick Vasseur has confirmed, that the season can still be somewhat straightened out. The dream of the Constructors' Championship is not abandoned. We won't comment on this point and will wait for events to unfold. We can add that, technically, the Ferrari engineers believe they have understood many things and are confident they can resolve them within two races. It remains to be seen if this will be true. In the meantime, work resumes in Marinello after the two-week summer vacation, and Ferrari begins the second half of the 2024 Formula One season with the hope of turning around a championship that has confined them to the role of the fourth best team, a position that feels uncomfortably tight. The dynamics of the F1 World Championship have changed with the summer heat. Even though Max Verstappen leads the championship by 78 points over Lando Norris, it's widely believed that McLaren is now the benchmark car. The MCL 38 single-seater is considered the universal car that adapts best to the various tracks on the calendar, while the Red Bull RB20, which dominated the start of the season, seems to have lost its crown despite having the three-time Formula One world champion. Ferrari was supposed to be the challenger to the Milton Keynes team, but just when they had planned to catch up with the reigning champions, they began to slip back. Currently, they are third in the constructors' standing C, but it's clear that Mercedes has also turned a corner, solving its issues, and the W15 has collected three wins with Lewis Hamilton and George Russell, making the SF24 seem the least competitive among the top four. The situation is far from rosy. Even though Charles Leclerc inherited a third-place finish at the Spa-Francorchamps circuit after the disqualification of the winner George Russell, that boosted the team's morale. At the Dutch GP, Max's stronghold, the Scuderia seeks a resurgence ahead of Monza. Diego Tondi's aerodynamic team has reportedly identified the area of the car that caused the rear instability, making the SF24 suddenly nervous and therefore difficult to control at the limit. Despite the FIA-imposed restrictions, the Marinello Technicanes were able to make modifications to the underbody that should give the drivers the confidence to achieve results more in line with the team's expectations. Last year, Zandvoort represented one of the lowest points of the 2023 Formula One season. The Dutch race was treated as a test to break out of a negative slump. The benefits of the work done in the Netherlands were seen later, with the car showing the true potential of the SF23, a car born with too many flaws. The feeling is that Marinello believes it has overcome the most challenging moment before the race that reopens hostilities, and the hope is that this will be evident even at Max Verstappen's home track. The Ferrari heading to the Netherlands is still very cautious about making predictions, but the decision to direct the airflow differently toward the diffuser should ensure the necessary aerodynamic load to tackle a challenging circuit with its banked turns 3 and 14, which require a specific setup. While they reduce lateral tire strain, they significantly increase vertical load. The simulator data has been encouraging. Will the track confirm it?